Hey all, so this is the Masters of War event. This is a Light Commander event and Noble Killer. So this can be quite tricky. Noble Killer doesn't have too many older cards that have damage boosts. I made up a few teams though that I will talk about. I haven't made up a team for the Ultimates yet though. So let's start with the first team. This can be used on both the Bosses and the Crusade. Creators of Legend is the first card. Has a nice light commander damage increase, 225%. Then Divine Sovereigns. This has a 500% damage boost to one card. Used to boost up Twin Fangs. This creates power gems, also increases self damage when it has a full skill meter, which is pretty much all of the time. The damage on this card though, doesn't show what it actually deals. For example, if it says 50Q on the card, the damage will be nearer to 150Q. That hasn't been fixed yet either, unfortunately. Breakers of the Cycle. A very nice increase to Light Commander damage. 255%. Then finally, Nick Master Blades. This gives another 225% increase to Light Commander damage. Probably more suitable for the bosses over the Crusade. Nick, Master of Blades, can be swapped for another card. But that's the first team I had available anyway. Now for the Relics. This is my best Light Commander Relics with two Noble Relics at the end. So here we go. That's the second Relic. Then the third Relic here. An Arcane Relic. Here's one of the Noble Relics. And this team does need the two Relics to break the eight Shields. On the prismatic bosses so there we go so the next team is pretty similar to this team i've just swapped nick for caladria's last lineage it's an ultimate form the damage boost is not quite as high though in testing it was doing similar damage to the previous team maybe even slightly higher just because it was giving better boards with the extra power gems so it's something to try anyway Plus there's that final hope skill, increases self damage. So this could potentially be used as a hitting card as well. That's the card anyway. There are plenty of better potential hitting cards than that though. One of the other cards that could be really useful as a hitting card is some of their siblings. I will talk more about that in the team that I've set up here. The alternative idea team. The relics are basically the same as the previous team. So let's move on to the third team. The idea behind this team is you would use this in Crusade and pick an ally noble killer card. Then hopefully this will make the Crusade a bit easier. There's no hitting card on this team. It's just five cards that increase light commander damage. The idea is the ally card you pick would be the hitting card for this team. As such, it would be boosted up by the final card, Divine Sovereigns. You would use this, then the event ultimate form from an ally. It's an interesting idea. Because Noble Killer for Light is quite difficult, I will probably use this for most of the Crusades. I can search the adventurers for Light Commander Noble Killer cards with this team. Or just use my friends. It's useful for the Crusade I think. Having two hitting cards. For example this team. Plus an ally hitting card. Is not going to be as effective. As five cards that increase damage. With one ally hitting card. Hopefully that makes sense. And the alternative idea. Pretty similar to the previous teams. Only two cards have been changed. We have Creators of Legend again with the big damage increase to Light Commander. Then Divine Sovereigns with the 500% damage boost. That would go on some less siblings. The advantage of this card is it has that cleanse skill. Now the bosses do have Chaos and Traitor. So it will only remove one of them. Bear that in mind if you do want to use this card. Then Breakers of the Cycle again with the damage increase. Then you will need a Noble Killer card. Star Song Wolf Pack seems like the best choice out of the older cards since you don't need another hitting card, but 
That's entirely up to you if you want to try a team like this. It may be tricky without the event deck. There are not that many decent Light Commander Naval Killer heroes, if I'm being honest. Twin Fangs is pretty much the only decent one I have, and that's a hitting card that replaces some best siblings. You could always sneak Metaverse Masters on a team as well. It's only 150%, so it may not be that useful. I haven't put it on any of my teams, but Twin Fangs will convert the Dark Gems into light so it does work in that respect anyway that's the teams i have available for this event let's get on with the actual event here we go all right so here's the actual event there's no special features here but there is a guild vault which i'll talk about a bit later on the guild bosses have traitor and chaos on them what i'll do is use the first team here then See if my second team does any more damage. Shouldn't have too many problems with the enemy skills, but we will see as I start the battle. Oh, right, here we go. Keep an eye on the middle card, though. It's the hitting card, but the damage on the card doesn't show how much it's actually hitting for. It's a bit weird. It's a bug that's been in the game for quite a while. Something to note anyway. I think this is the best activation order for this team. But there's nothing much loose from the main match unfortunately. So it won't be an optimal hit. Let's see how much health is off the boss. So about 120-ish Q I would have thought that did. It's more than the 40 Q that the card said. These two enemy skills shouldn't cause too many problems. Trace is probably the worst out of the two. Takes down the health. I have a revive though, so that shouldn't be too much of a problem. You could also use a card like Some Best Siblings to remove the traitor if you're having major problems with it. It will be more of a problem on the ultimates, I would have thought. Right, we'll try this again. Then I'll probably quit out and try another team, I would have thought. I don't think this is really giving especially good grids. I'm not sure if I should change the activation order. I thought that was the best, but probably not anyway. Let's quit out at this point. You've seen the damage of this team. All right, the second Light Commander team you can see here may give better grids, so I think it's worth trying over the first one. Even though the damage boosts are higher on this team, it doesn't seem to give grids that are that good, unfortunately. So let's give this a go. All right, here we go. So I think left to right is probably the best way to use this team. Let's see what happens anyway, if I can get some sort of mega hit out of the team or not. Probably unlikely, but it's worth trying. There's something like this, I would have thought. Yeah, that's looking like it's giving better grids than the previous team, even though the damage boosts are not as high. So this may well be the team I end up using. Let's see the damage on the middle card. 49Q, so that's about the same I would have thought, as the previous team. So, not especially exciting, I guess. But, yeah, both teams are about the same sort of damage. If the grid is not very good on this team, it won't do too much damage, though. So, I do need a good grid. That might be quite difficult, unfortunately. Let's try one more hit on the boss. See what... Sort of grid I get, see what sort of damage I deal. This will kill the boss eventually. You can see though, the boss has a lot of health. This will break more shields on the ultimates though, with the correct relics. So, it may be the better option, or I may need to make up something completely different based around either this team or the previous team. The grids are definitely better though, you can see for yourselves. There's more loose from the main match than with the previous team. So this will probably be the team 
I ended up using. That was quite chunky damage as well. Right to quit out. So we'll try out my alternative team as well here. It won't do too much damage as the Noble Killer card doesn't have a damage increase. But it's worth a try I think. Some of their siblings will need to do around 150Q to compare with the previous team. Just bear in mind the damage on the previous card, the previous Noble Killer card, was not accurate, as I already mentioned. Let's see what this does, though. I don't think that's the best activation order, as the board has crushed together. Let's try, though, see what sort of damage I could do. Star Song Wolfpack does have an upgrade skill. 62.1Q, so that's about a third of the damage of the previous teams. But the advantage of this team is that it does have a cleanse for the traitor. Plus, I think it removed chaos as well. Oh, no, it didn't. It's only put on the one card. So, yeah, that's one benefit of this team. But since the damage is quite a bit lower, it's not something I will be using, I would have thought. Might come in handy for the ultimates, I guess, as an alternative idea. If Star Song Wolfpack had a big damage increase for all cards, this would be a lot better, but unfortunately it doesn't. Plus, some of their siblings only removes either Traitor or Chaos. It doesn't remove both by the looks of it, since it's two debuffs for your own cards. Anyway, this is the final hit I'm doing with this team. Then I'll quit out. There we go, 53.3Q. Right, there we go. So 53Q-ish on some of their siblings. If we go back over to the other team, Twin Fangs. I know the damage on Twin Fangs was showing about the same, but it hits a lot harder, so... It gives sort of an accurate representation of the damage that my teams can do. Anyway, that's the team testing done. So this is an interesting new feature. The free Guild War heroes. I want to have a look at this and see what I get. We got some free tokens. 257 heroes remaining. So you only get to open it once by the looks of it with your free tokens. Let's go ahead and do this and see what I get. Here we go. This could be interesting. Okay, that's a Light Dragoon. Okay. Right. Let's get out of here and just have a look at that. Light and Dragoon. Here we go. Igro Army. Now this is Ascended. Interestingly enough, it's also Noble Killer. Creates power gems, but no damage boost. So it is a slightly older Dragoon. Still not bad, though, for a freebie. Then if we go over to here, you can see what it looks like at two pink stars. I won't be working on this one. I have another one that... I use as my main GVG Dragoon, well for light anyway. Respendant Sol, this one has that damage increase. It's only 50%, but it's still better than having no damage increase. One I worked on quite a long time ago. A bit outdated now, but still not bad. Anyway, that's what the pack gives. You have a rough idea of what you can get from it. So if you click the Get Guild Hero Coins, you'll see a quest that comes up and a weekly guild quest as well. The solo quest is very easy for today. Just a gear dungeon mission and you will need to do seven of these quests to be able to open the vault again. I assume it's a vault. It looked like a vault. Just go back onto this quickly. Yeah, Guild Wars Hero Vault. 
And if you complete the guild quest, you get seven of the tokens. So you have an idea for how this works. Plus it has a long cooldown timer on the event, 22 days. So that's quite an interesting feature. Obviously I only opened it once, so I can't give an accurate representation of what it can give. But free stuff is always very welcomed. So there we go. Right, so if we go back over to the event page, let's go ahead and claim the collection. Right, so this time around it's potions. Yeah, potions, that's not too bad, I guess. It could be worse. The epic potions at the bottom are okay. Let's go ahead and claim this all anyway. There we go, that's that done. All right. Let's back out of here and have a look at the either Dragoon or Warden. All right, back in Emperors. I'm doing okay so far, plus I have decent cards, so hopefully I'll do okay this event. Oh, it's a Vanguard. It's neither a Dragoon or a Warden. Harbinger of War Ares. Is the Vanguard Might. What's the skill? Dodge. Oh, that's not too bad, actually. Could be potentially useful, as with all Vanguards, best placed in position slot one, then using your best Wardens after that. That's my opinion on a GBG defence anyway. That's pretty decent, plus it's dark, so could be interesting if used in a defence. That's entirely up to you if you want to do that or not. Right, let's go over to the Ultimates page. I need to make the random six star hero by upgrading the support hero, so let's do that quickly. All right, that's done. Let's go ahead and claim the random six star hero. Let's see what I get. Oh, that's, I think that's an old ultra rare actually. I know it's a very old card. I can't remember exactly if it's an ultra rare or a master hero. It's not going to help me too much though, unfortunately. Here's the event deck. War God's Progency increases self damage by 550%. So this could be really useful on my team. It also has that passive rally troops that has a cleanse on itself. An interesting deck. I need a better hitting card, as the two that I have are a bit outdated now. Some less siblings and twin fangs, so I may get this after the event has finished. Since this is a hitting deck, the one card on its own won't really help you. You can see here though, I almost have enough coins to get it now, so if I did get lucky with a main hero from somewhere, I could do that and then get it now, but I need to go a few more tiers of each of the vault packs, I would have thought, so it might be expensive. What I could do is go to tier four on the main vault pack, then just tier three, I would have thought, on the side packs. That might do it. Anyway, that's the end of this video. I hope you found that interesting and helpful. As always, if you do have any questions or suggestions regarding this, please let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to help. If you did enjoy this video, please do give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Subscribing is always very much appreciated. I've included the previous video on the screen, plus a playlist. Plus you can also subscribe from here if you want to do so. And thanks for watching.